Okay, we're in the workshop. Something different today. My friend Lee is here. Now then. Now then. <laughs> well done. Um, and he was telling me we're here on a fixathon, having a look at some uh, scrap inverters. But he was telling me that he's had a problem with his ground source heat pump that it was fitted quite a while ago and it stopped working and he couldn't get anybody to fix it so he's done it himself and it cost nearly half nothing it's just a matter of sort of trying to understand how they work and in this case or in most cases as one suspects it's not the hardware as in the compressor or the um, evaporators it's the bits that control stuff and that's common with a lot of especially modern cars it's the controls that are the problem so anyway so Lee was just going to tell us about how he thought the process through and what he found so uh, just one clarification it's a air source heat pump yep and uh, it's several years old um, and it was working fine and then it developed this fault and the code was an 06 code and I've got a manual for this uh, heat pump and it lists all the codes in and the 06 code I think it says is a heat exchanger temperature sensor um, and it basically says uh, temperature is out of the range wait until the temperature goes back into range and the thing will work again but because it seemed to be a permanent fault, it stops the heat pump from working at all. So um, I tried to um, I had a look at it, uh, tried to see if there was a local person uh, to fix it because I you know, kind of like to support little tradespeople. And there was a guy, he came around, he had a look, uh, didn't seem to want to fix it or couldn't fix it. Uh, I spoke to the manufacturer, uh, they have got like a helpline uh, and they said uh, we can't do anything for you because although we're still trading with the same brand name we're now a different company so we can't send you an engineer because we don't support the product anymore and we can't provide you with any parts for the same reason. All we can do is send you the manual which I already had. So one day I just pulled it apart, this heat pump, um, took the covers off and had a look inside and tried to find out what this heat exchange temperature sensor was. And there's two compartments in the heat pump. And we'll put a photo in. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one compartment has this big fan and the fan pulls the air through the evaporator and the other compartment has... Uh, most of the pipe work, the compressor, the electronics, the electrical connections and things like that. And in, inside the top of this second compartment is a, a circuit board. So I'm just looking at this circuit board and trying to find what might be a sensor. And I already know from reading the instruction manual that there's more than one sensor. There's a number of sensors. So I'm looking for a number of very small cables on this circuit board. And you can see from the picture that there's a whole number of them in a row on the circuit board. So, uh, obviously I've turned the heat pump off, everything's nice and safe, and I'm pulling, each one at a time I'm pulling these sensor connections out, then I'm turning the heat pump back on, going back indoors to look at the display to see whether the fault code has disappeared or whether some other information has appeared. And I'm trying to basically find which of the sensors is causing this 06. And then I'll trace the cable back to find where it physically is connected to the heat pump. So I do that, I find which one it is. Um, what happened there? How did you find that? Did it come up with a different code? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, in fault, it, it showed an 06 code permanently. And when I disconnected that sensor, the 06 code disappeared, um, and that was how I found which sensor right. it was. That so makes it, it sense. Was, it was as simple as that. Yeah. Um, so got to the other end of the sensor where the sort of metal bulb sensing tip was, and that was in a little sleeve. It, 
and, and so it's reasonably easy for me to just sort of push that out of its sleeve. So is this like two wires, thin wires, going to a little capsule on the end or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, that's basically it. It's two wires with a, with a little electrical connector on the end. Yeah. And on the other end of it is this, is this metal capsule, a little cylinder, um, which is designed to be held close to whatever temperature it's sensing. And, and in this case, it's, there's, a, there's the refrigerant pipe on this evaporator, and uh, soldered to this pipe is a little tiny piece of copper pipe, and it just slots in there, and it's got a little holding clip in it. And it pushes it hard against the oh, evaporator yeah. pipe. So you don't actually have to know what the bits of the, the air source heat pump are doing. All you need to know is that those thin wires are going to a sensor. Yeah. 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 Okay. It, it was actually that simple. Yeah. So I pulled this thing out and I had a good look at it um, because I wanted to see if there were any identifying marks on it so that maybe, although the supplier couldn't give me a part, maybe I could just find the part online. No markings on the ah. sensor at all. Yes. Uh, why is that not so desperately familiar? Well, quite. So, uh, looked in the manual. In the back of the manual, there is um, there is a, a useful uh, spare parts list. Um, it, it's not that descriptive, and of course it gives a part number which you can't use because that's the manufacturer's part number and they don't support the product anymore. But what it did tell me was that it was an NTC sensor, so that's a negative temperature coefficient sensor. So how these work, as I understand it, um, they work on resistance, electrical resistance, uh, measured in ohms, and they're touching something what they're, they're measuring the temperature of, and as the temperature goes up, the resistance in ohms goes down with an NTC sensor. I think that's right, and I think the alternative is a PTC, a positive temperature coefficient sensor. So if the temperature went up, the ohms would go up. Right, so the resistance gets the larger. Resistance, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is an, an NTC sensor, but the problem is that because it's a faulty sensor, I can't measure the ohms value in order to then find out what the standard setting of it is to buy a replacement because it's not working and that's why it's stopping the heat pump from working and it might not be that the other sensors that are on this board are the same type of sensor they might have different ohms resistance values as standard so you were quite lucky that the manual told you that it was an NTC yes. Yes. if you didn't know that you'd be really quite up against bought, it. I might have accidentally bought a PTC sensor yes. and it would have actually worked in incorrectly. But it might have worked. It might have worked briefly and yeah. then come up with the crazy reading that the control box in, in the house wouldn't understand and then cause another error saying well, yes. it's outside of range or something yes. and it turns the heat pump off again. Could you have, for instance, gone I've got a thousand ohm resistors, mm -hmm. resistor, I'm just going to put it across these two and see what happens. Um, I think it. I, I think it would work to a degree, but um, whether it because that's a set value yeah. resistance, which doesn't change with temperature. As the heat pump then uh, runs up to temperature, um, it might be that the logic on the circuit board in the controller, which un interprets all of these values that are coming in, it, there might be some logic in there which says well, this temperature is now high and this temperature hasn't changed, maybe it pulls up another error yeah, yeah, exactly. because, it, because it doesn't have this varying but resistance. As a proof of concept, you could have maybe put something there. Yes. Or yeah. a variable resistor. Yes. And twiddled it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, just, just as a proof of concept. Proof of concept, Interest, yeah. Interesting that that's part of the analytics, really, maybe. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we know it's an NTC. We know it's an NTC. We don't know what the standard... Uh, ohms rating is though, so I still can't order a part. Um, so I start looking online uh, for heat pump sensors, temperature sensors. Don't have any luck there. So then I start looking on, uh, more specifically on eBay. And after quite a long time, I, I, I chance upon um, a temperature sensor. It, it just says temperature sensor. Um, 
and it says commonly used in air conditioning units. Well a heat pump, an air source heat pump is not too dissimilar to an air conditioning unit. It doesn't do the cooling part mm. but the heating side you know is quite similar so I thought well, maybe I should try one of these and what it offered was it offered different ohms values you could order a 5,000, a 10,000 ohm, 15, 20, 50, all, lots of different sizes. I basically guessed, so um, I, I actually ordered four, and I ordered the four lowest values. And I thought, maybe I'll get lucky. I, I could have ordered them one at a time, but in practical terms, to put the sensor in, you have to take all the covers off and things. And you can't leave the covers off because the, the unit is outside and the rain gets in. So I thought, you know, if I order four of them, different values, maybe one of them will work and I only have to take the covers mm. off once. And how much were they? For the whole four, yeah. it was £13. Right. Yeah. Not very much. No. Um, obviously with the postage. Um, so I get a 5k, a 10k, a 15k and a 20 and they turn up. The, I closely look at them. The, from the pictures, I could tell that the the shape of the bulb looked the same, but the actual diameter was slightly smaller. Um, the length of the bulb was slightly smaller, but I didn't think that would be a big problem. The cable was the same, slightly smaller in length, but again, it, it reached from point to point. Yeah. The connector was identical, which meant I could plug wow. it straight into the board. That's so that, a win. That was a win, yeah. So basically what I did was, I, I, I trial and error, I just went through these four sensors, plugging them in, going inside, looking at the controller, first of all seeing whether the 06 code had disappeared, which it did. It did on all of them actually. But the ones that had the wrong value resistance, they very quickly, as the temperature of the heat pump um, increased, they very quickly... Um, showed temperatures that were completely implausible. So I knew that I'd got the wrong resistance values. So I took that out and I, and, I, and I got to the final one and the final one in this case happened to be a 10,000 ohm um, resistor, uh, um, temperature sensor. And it works a treat. Isn't that brilliant? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For, I mean, for 13 pounds. Right, yeah. so 10,000 ohms. Yeah. Now, now did you actually measure the the faulty one at all? Because it might have been to. like ten percent out of its range or something. I tried to, yeah. um, bearing in mind that as the temperature of it changes, the resistance value changes, and because the instruction manual didn't tell me what the standard temperature should be for the standard yeah. resistance, I didn't actually know no. whether what I would see would, would be correct or not. All I knew was that it was out of range enough to stop the heat pump from working. Right, so it was maybe it's either not working all at all or out of range. So what I was hoping was that uh, this sort of video would just give people an idea that it's not as high tech mm. as they all want you to believe. Because you've got something that is, say, I don't know, six or eight years old the company that fitted them have gone out of business yeah and nobody wants to fix it yeah or if they have if they're still in business they go oh, we don't use these anymore we do this one yeah we need to fit you a new one and isn't that sort of a criminal waste yeah absolutely in fact the guy who came uh to try and fix it um he he it was quite clear that he had a lot of experience of working with different brands of heat pumps. Um, and I'd already reached the point where I, I, you know, it seemed to me that really what this was about was a, a faulty sensor. But at that point I didn't know what it looked like or what type it was or anything like that. So I thought, well, you know, he's going to know this stuff and he's probably got a van full of sensors and this is going to be quite straightforward. But he sort of, uh, he didn't seem very keen to, to do anything about the sensor and he very quickly got to a point in the converse, conversation where he said, um, you know, it might be that you just have to bite the bullet and have a new unit, which 
I imagine happens to people all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that it's this sort of this acceptance that you can't fix anything and nothing lasts very long. Yeah, and it turned out to be thir well, not even thirteen pounds. If I you used didn't one know, one out of yeah. four senses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now I just wonder whether you know. Again, just thinking sideways. Uh, you've got this sensor mm. and you've pulled it out of its housing but it's still connected mm. to the uh, the board mm. whether you drop the connect this this sensor in a cup of hot tea mm. or a cup of ice water mm. Mm. and just see what it does mm. yeah, yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah I mean that's I, I, even like I mean um, I, I took one of these sensors and I and I measured some values on it um, and just the temperature difference in my hand from just sitting there or being in my hand it, it very quickly you know one degree you can see a change in the resistance yes. values so it doesn't need to change much and it is quite easy to, to prove that concept and it is also quite easy to prove if you don't I mean I was lucky I had an instruction manual which said this was an NTC if that's not the case then it's possible with a multimeter set to temperature and a multimeter set to um, resistance, uh, resistance yeah. to actually tell whether it's an NTC or a PTC. So that's part of the answer. It doesn't tell you what the value should be because obviously it would be a faulty sensor, so yeah. it would read the wrong value. But it does get you that far. It does tell you whether right. you're an NTC or a PTC. So you have this sensor yeah. and you put you put a uh, a multimeter across it, yeah. showing resistance, yeah. yeah, and then you grab hold of the sensor. Well, first of all, you don't hold it, um, but the, the but you could do, couldn't you? You could do, yeah, but and that will change the temperature. Yeah, 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 and then if you let go, it yeah. cools down and it changes it again. And that, if it's cooling down and and the resistance is going down, that's a positive. Yeah. If it's cooling down and the resistance is going up, that's a negative temperature. So that's a quick test. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. now talking here, we've allowed somebody to go, I don't know what it is, but if I take it out and use my multimeter and just grab hold of it, yeah. does the resistance change up or down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I get, I, I don't know, I don't have any evidence for this, but I suspect that a lot of these heat pumps um, use very similar parts. So if I've had some success with a 10K uh, resistance sensor, like I say, there's, I think on, on the board on mine, I think there was four temperature sensors. They may not all be 10K, but I get the feeling that if one of them is 10K, it's unlikely that others are going to be 100K or 50K. Yeah. I think they're probably going to be in the lower all range. All the same. Yeah, all the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. So I think if 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 without any further information, that might the lower range might be a good place to start. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. That's been absolutely marvellous. Hope it works for people. Cheers for now. Okay.